అందరికీ నమస్కారములు టుడే ఈజ్ ద ట్వెల్త్ డే ఆఫ్ అవర్ క్లాసెస్ ఆన్ సనాతన ధర్మ అండ్ టుడే ఈజ్ నైన్త్ ఫిబ్రవరి టూ థౌజండ్ ట్వంటీ త్రీ అండ్ వీ హ్యావ్ ఫినిష్ సో ఫార్ విత్ వేదాస్ వేదాందాస్ ఉపనిషత్స్ అండ్ ఆల్సో ధర్మశాస్త్రాస్ now we are going to start with darshanas then we will proceed to vimana shastra and bhagavad gita later on we have other big topics like uh, vedic mathematics shodasa samskaramulu ramayana mahabharatam and so on this is a basic course of 3 months where all topics connected with uh, sanatan dharma are covered we are going to have another three levels level 2 level 3 and level 4 where we will go deeper into each of these topics which will be um, the, all these people who have successfully completed this course will be eligible for that for those people that will be conducted and the advanced course will be conducted from 23 uh, sorry July 23, uh, this year, in July. Okay, now uh, we will start with Munde uh, Mataram by Challa Chitibabu Garu. Chant Prarthana. After that, we will proceed with the Bepina. So, request all of you to stand up and... Recite Vande Matram along with Salva Chitra Bhavagar. Vande Mataram Vande Mataram Sujalam Sufalam Malaya Jasitalam సస్య శ్యామలాతరం వందే మాతరం సుబ్రజ్యోష్ణాపులకితయామిని పుల్లకుసుమితృమదళశోభిని సుహాసిని సుమధురభాషిణి సుఖదాం వరదాం మాతరం వందే మాతరం వందే మాతరం వందే మాతరం ఇట్ ఇస్ రిక్వెస్ట్ జీ టు చాంట్ ప్రార్థన Namaskaram. Let's do meditation for one minute. Let's close our eyes. Let's sit straight. Let's focus on the class for the next hour and a half. గణపతి గుంహవామహే కవిం కవీం నా ఉపమస్రవస్తమం జ్యేష్టరాజం బ్రహ్మణ బ్రహ్మణస్పత ఆనశృణ్వన్నూతిభి సీద సాధనం ఓ శ్రీ మహాగణాధిపతయే నమ ప్రణోదేవి సరస్వతి వాజేర్వాజినీవతి ీనామవిత్రవతు ఓ శ్రీ మహాసరస్వత్యై నమ 
ಗುರುರೇವ ಗತಿ ಗುರು ಮೇವ ಭಜೆ ಗುರು ನೈವ ಸಹಾಸ್ಮಿ ನಮೋ ಗುರವೇ ನ ಗುರೋ ಪರಮಂ ಶಶಿರಸ್ಮಿ ಗುರೋ ಮತಿರಸ್ತಿ ಗುರೋ ಮಮ ಪಾಹಿ ಗುರೋ ಜ್ಞಾನಂದಮಯ ದೇವ ನಿರ್ಮಲ ಸ್ಫಟಿಕಾಕೃತಿ ಆಧಾರಂ ಸರ್ವ ವಿದ್ಯಾನ ಹಯಗ್ರೀವ ಮುಪಾಸ್ಮಹೆ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ಪಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತೋ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನೆ ವ್ಯೋಮ ಬದ್ಯಾಪ್ತ ದೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಅಸತೋ ಮಾ ಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾ ಜ್ಯೋತಿರ್ಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮಾ ಅಮೃತ ಗಮಯ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಮಾತೃದೇವೋ ಭವ ಪಿತೃದೇವೋ ಭವ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ದೇವೋ ಭವ ಅತಿಥಿ ದೇವೋ ಭವ ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧಿ ತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳಂಡಿ ನಾವು ಲೆಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರಭು ಗಾರು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ವೆಬಿನಾರ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾದಿಭ್ಯೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಕರ್ತೃಭ್ಯೋ ವಂಶರ್ಷಿಭ್ಯೋ ಮಹದ್ಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ಗುರುಭ್ಯ ಸರ್ವೋಪ್ಲವರಹಿತ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾನ ಘನ ಪ್ರಕ್ಷಗರ್ಭೋ ಸೋಹನಸ್ತಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೈವಾಹನಸ್ತಿ ಓ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಗುಲಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೇದ್ಯಂಕರ ವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧಿ ತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಓವರ್ವ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ದರ್ಶನಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಸೈನ್ಡ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಆಸ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ವೇದಾಸ್ ವೇದಾಂಗಾಸ್ ಧರ್ಮಶಾಸ್ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಧರ್ಮಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಾಸ್ then next in the line comes darshanas or what are called the upangas you might have heard the word sangopanga veda jainam so in the olden days or even now some people they study in the vedic arshalas gurukulas sangopanga veda jain veda adhyayanam sa anga upanga adhyayanam does not mean reading books it means chanting the veda so where they perform veda jhanam for 12 years minimum or sometimes 17 years and along with it simultaneously they will study angas and upangas sanga upanga veda jhanam that will give you the command over the subject so without which they will only know how to chant correctly and the correctness of chanting is more important than even the just bland reading or understanding is not acceptable the correct chanting with the correct swara has been delivered from generation to generation for thousands and thousands of years and out of the 
hundreds of uh, Veda Shakas. We are left only with the eight of them right now. We have studied us, the overview of those Vedas. And the Sangha, Upanga, Angas, and the Vedanga, Siksha, Kalpa, Vyakana, Nanukta, Chanda, Sanjaj. You have studied the overview of the six Vedangas. And the six Upangas are known as the six Darshanas, which will be to understand an overview today, tomorrow, and after. Okay. In three days, it is like trying to swallow an ocean with your hand. But yet, we will get an overview. So the word darshana means perspective. In Hindi, the word darshana means philosophy. Darshan sahitya means philosophical literature. In Sanskritam, it means a perspective. Obviously, it's a philosophical perspective. That's why in Hindi, it is known as philosophy. In Telugu, it is known as a view. Darshanam means view perspective. Perspective of what? Perspective of the reality. As explained uh, in my previous first day lecture, the Vedas comprise all subjects possible and the reality comprises of all different subjects, devtas. All devtas are nothing but subjects. And the perspective of the reality of Vedas, that is the reality as depicted in the Vedas, that is nature, Ishvara, self, so many aspects, they can be perceived or viewed in different perspectives. You can view in this perspective, in this perspective. So one mountain can be viewed in different perspectives. It looks to be different in different angles of perspective. Perspection. So it is not a different mountain, it's the same mountain. It looks to be different from different perspectives, which are all valid. So the logical perspective of the universe or the truth or the reality depicted in the Veda. Veda means knowledge, knowledge of all topics. It's called Nyaya Darshana. Nyaya means logic, logical darshan. And the psychological perspective or the mental perspective is known as yoga. And philosophical, purely theoretical philosophical perspective is known as Vedanta. And we have the ritual karma perspective is known as Mimamsa. And the basic uh, definition of the nature and uh, man is Sankhya. So historically, if you look at it, the six perspectives, which are known as the Shadangas. In fact, some people have the name surnamed Shadangi, distorted as Sarangi. You might have seen those names. Those who have studied six Darshanas are known as Shadangis. Why they are six? These are the six major Astika Darshanas. They accept in the existence of a creator, Ishwara. And there are Nastika Darshanas. Buddhist, Jain, Charvaka, Lokayaka. There are about 24 darshanas total. Sarva Darshana Samuchaya, one book is there, written by Madhva, uh, the Madhva, that he puts. Madhva was the brother of Sayana. Sayana wrote the commentary to the Vedas, and Madhva wrote the Sarva Darshana Samuchaya, which is a 24 child darshanas accumulation including the Nastika, Charvaka, Lokayata. Charvaka Darshana is materialism, hedonism, dialectal materialism. That means nothing but enjoyment exists. Ranam Krutva, Krutam people enjoy, enjoy, enjoy and die. die. Death itself is moksha. And your enjoyment is what is purpose of life. And they accept only Prachaksha Pramana. Like this, Lokayatas are also materialistic darshanas. And Baudha is also Nastika darshana. Baudha, Jaina, both are Nastika darshanas. But they accept Dharma, Yoga, and even some extent Atma. 
Donadi Shura. So I am not going to cover the Nastika Darshanas. They are outside the scope because they oppose the Veda because Veda upholds the existence of Ishwara. So basically, the Trinity triad is there, Jiva, Ishwara, and Jagat. You cannot deny the existence of Jagat, the universe which appears to exist. The word Jagat itself means that which goes, Jate Raita, Jagat. So it goes on changing. The only change is real. Nothing else is real. Nothing else is permanent. As you know in this world, nothing is permanent except change itself, which is making the permanent not possible. That itself is real and permanent. So that is why it's called Jagat, that which goes, go on going. So nobody can deny the existence of Jagat. Similarly, nobody can deny the existence of Jiva, that is myself or yourself. The individual cannot be denied the existence because I am an individual. If I don't exist, nothing exists. Third is Ishwara, God or creator, who is supposed to have created this Jagat. So all philosophies are circling around these three concepts. Whether Ishwara created Jagat and Jiva, whether Jagat and Jiva are different, whether Ishwara and Jagat are different, are one and the same. So different philosophies give different combinatorial, permutatorial interpretations. And Advaita says all the three are one. Jagan Mithya Brahma Satyam, Jivo Brahmaiva Naparaha. Jagat actually doesn't exist. Only Brahman exists. And this Jiva is no different from Brahman. This is Advaita. We will come into all this in the Vedanta Darshan. And in Dvaita, Brahman and Jiva are different. And Jagat is a Maya Leela of Ishwara. And Vishishtha Dvaita, Jiva and Ishwara are different. But finally, they will merge in the Moksha state. And then there is Dvaita Dvaita and Shuddha Dvaita and so on and so forth. There are 25 Siddhantas in Vedanta Darshan, which we will be covering maybe on Monday. So the, that is the last darshana, and the first is Sankhya by Kapila. Let us now look into Sankhya. Kapila Maharshi, we pray to him. He is the first of the darshana sutra karas, Sankhya sutras of Kapila comprise the Sankhya darshana. Ishwara Chandra wrote a commentary to it. And it is known as Nirishwara Sankhya. Because there is no Ishwara there in Sankhya. There is Purusha and Prakriti. Prakriti is nature, Jagat. And Jagat is comprised of Prakriti and Purusha. Purusha is man, that is I, or the observer. Whether Jiva and Purusha are separate, not in this case. Here, Purusha or Jiva one and the same. Man and nature, to put it very bluntly. Because in the first evolution of the philosophical perspective of understanding nature and man, it is a very common sense approach to say that I exist and nature exists. So Prakriti and Purusha, Purusha and Prakriti. So what is Prakriti? Bhagavad Gita itself gives the definitions of what is Prakriti, what is Purusha. Because Bhagavad Gita is basically a Sankhya text, it is also a Yoga text, it is also a Vedanta text. Prakritim Purusham Chaiva Vidhi Anadi Ubhavapi Vikarans Chakunams Chaiva Vidhi Prakriti Sambhava Karya Karada Kartritve Hetu Prakriti Ruchate Purusha Sukhadukhana Oktritve Hetu Ruchate. Realize that Prakriti and Purusha both are. Meaningless, anadi, rubhavapi, vikarans, chagunans, chaiva, vidhi, prakriti, sambhava. Every object in this world undergoes six vikaras, birth, growth, maturity, then 
liability weakness ek and death six vikaras are there shadbhav vikaras vikaransya gunansya eva the gunas are sattva guna rajoguna tamo guna this is a sankhya model which we all follow in all the shastras and bhagavad gita is elaborated entirely one whole chapter on the three gunas guna gunatraya vibhagi atinja vikaransya gunansya eva vidhi prakriti sambhavan karya karana kartrutve hetu prakriti uchyate whatever happens in this world that is karya and whatever is the cause of such happenings is karana and the owner of such karanas is kartrutva ownership karya karana kartrutve hetu prakriti uchyate the cause hetu of all the actions all their causations and all their ownerships whatever happens in this world but there is a proverb in telugu shivara jalayindi chemela gutta even an ant will not sting unless there is a cause order to do so so whatever happens in this universe has a cause and effect chain behind it and there is an ownership of those causes and effects and that is all under prakriti then if everything is doing being done by prakriti what is purusha doing purusha sukha dukha naam bhoktutve hetu vichar he is the feeler enjoyer thinker the individual self avyaya purusha sakshi kshetra jnokshare vacha we have the definition in the vishnu sahasra naam also kshetra kshetra jnya vibhaga yoga bhagavad gita also explains what is the kshetra idam shariram kaunteya kshetram itya vidhiyate etad yo vetitam prahu kshetra jnya dita dvidaha so the kshetra jnya is a man who knows this body and this universe kshetrajnyam cha mam vidhi sarva kshetreshu bharata and this kshetrajnya is one and the same in all kshetras etad jnya this is the jnana and now the same thing in sankhya that kshetrajnya is known as purusha purusha sukha dukha naam bhoktritve hetruchyate is the cause of enjoyment of sukha dukha bhokta sakshi purusha avyaya purusha sakshi kshetrajyo akshara eva cha and he is akshara indestructible so these two factors the manifest universe manifest nature and the purusha the feeler thinker enjoyer the observer sakshi the intelligent agency so these two are merged that how the universe exists the nature exists that is why it is depicted as ardhanarishwara or shiva and shakti prakriti purusha ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಪುರುಷ ಡ್ಯುಯಾಲಿಟಿ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ಸೂತ್ರ ಸಿಸ್ ತ್ರಿವಿಧ ದುಃಖ ನಿವೃತ್ತಿರ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥ ದಿ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಗೋಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಎಂಡವರ್ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಎಂಡವರ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದುಃಖ ನಿವೃತ್ತಿ ತ್ರಿವಿಧ ದುಃಖ ನಿವೃತ್ತಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಬ್ವಿಯಸ್ for us to understand what a man should do what should be human effort for aim that obviously to transcend to overcome problems sorrows miseries dukkhas and those dukkhas are identified in three categories adhi daiva adhi bhautika adhi daivika and adhi atma so that is why we say shanti three times so these dukkhas trividha dukkha nivrutti ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಅಚೀವ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಪ್ರಿವೆಂಟ್ ಇಫ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಾಲ್ವ್ ದಿ ತ್ರೀ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಿಸರೀಸ್ ಸಾರೋಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ 
ತ್ರಿವಿಧ ದುಃಖ ನಿವೃತ್ತಿ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ಆಫ್ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ದರ್ಶನ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೋ ಟ್ರೂ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೋ ವ್ಯಾಲಿಡ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡಿನೈ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲಿಡಿಟಿ ಸೊ ಹೌ ಟು ಅಚೀವ್ ದಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದುಃಖ ಈಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಮರ್ಜ್ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಐ ಸಫರ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಮಿಸರೀಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಫೀಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆರ್ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ದ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಐ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ದೆನ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸಾರೋಸ್ ಅಸಂಗೋಯಂ ಪುರುಷ ದಟ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ಸೂತ್ರಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪುರುಷ ಈಸ್ ಅಸಂಗ ಅನ್ಅಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಡ್ ಟು ದಿ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ to realize that uh, to be established in that asangatva is the objective goal of sankhya darshana and the process to achieve that is given in the yoga darshana so sankhya and yoga go together <clears throat> sankhya does not give any practical processes or steps but yoga gives then we will cover yoga now as an over darshana as an overview though we will be covering the practical aspects during the third month of our course on full month on yoga itself but the relationship between sankhya and yoga has to be understood sankhya is the framework theoretical framework for yoga also prakriti purusha they are there throughout yoga darshana and yoga darshana is comprising of yoga sutras of patanjali which we will discuss now and today we will limit ourselves to sankhya and yoga tomorrow we will cover jaya vaisheshika and after we will cover mimamsa and vedanta more of vedanta and less of mimamsa so today i have now given you the birds eye view the overview of sankhya darshana of course if you go further deeper there are the word sankhya comes from the number let us uh, word sankhya sankhya means number sankhya means number theory like num- numbered based on numbers so what are those numbers there are 24 tatvas the 24th is purusha the rest are all prakriti so the, uh, the components of prakriti the pancha bhutas pancha indriyas pancha tanmatras 19 over mano buddhi ahankara chitta so 23 and the 24th is purusha so this depiction of numbers is known as sankhya theory and the gunas are also part of the sankhya theory the gunas are fundamental there the entire indian philosophy is based on three gunas so we have decided this discussed and finish the sankhya theory now we'll go into the yoga theory so the practical procedures are discussed in the yoga sutras and the practical practices will be taught in the third month but the theory of yoga will be covered now yoga chitta vritti nirodha the very first sutra of patanjali is yoga atha yoga anushtasana now we shall discipline ourselves on to yoga yoga anushtasana we shall deliver delve into yoga so yoga is defined as yoga chitta vritti nirodha yoga is stopping the mind the modifications in the mind mental modifications chitta vrittis so what are these chitta vrittis pramana viparjaya vikalpa nidra smutaya there are five of them pratyaksha that is pramana viparjaya vikalpa nidra so that is smruti the pramana means pratyaksha anuman agama pramana there are three pramana chitta vrittis pratyaksha anumana and all so we will discuss these things 
and how to reach uh, moksha through yoga. In that, what you have to realize is that all the darshanas, both astika and nastika, they are aiming at moksha. What is moksha? Moksha is not to be born again. Once you die, normally we are all born again. Jata sahi dhruvam rutyu. Dhruvam janma mruta secha. Dhruvam definite is death for anyone who is having a birth. So anything which is born has to die. The body is born, body will die. Then it is also said, Dhruvam janma mruta secha. And for the one which is dead, there is a definite birth also. So this birth and death life cycle continues infinitely. And all the darshanas, even the Buddhist and Jain Nasya darshanas, they aim at moksha, how to get rid of this cycle of birth and rebirth. Because we know if you are born again, what will happen? We have suffered a lot in this life. Our enjoyment in this life is very limited compared to our suffering. We are continuously suffering all the time. So if you are born again, you will suffer more. Once again, it was such a bad experience, this life, that we don't want it again. Savena, such a bad experience, never again. So that is why the philosophers tried to get moksha as the solution for all the problems of life so that you are not born again. And for that purpose, the darshanas have come out with different approaches, different versions of the solution of the problem of bandha and the life rebirth. That is the main objective of moksha is not to be born again. But then what about this life? We are already born. And how to be free? The word moksha also means freedom. So how to be free from your bondages? Because in this life, you are bound to so many personalities, so many objects, so many things, so many theories. The affiliation or binding which you have with money, with theory, ideology, or with your family. Vitta, Putra, Shastra. There are three major attachments. These are Vitta, Putra, and Shastra. So this obsession, over-attachment. I'm not asking you to give up everything and go to the forest, which is not feasible. If you give up everything and go to the forest, within a few minutes, you may come running back to safety of the city. So within the existing constraints, how to be detached, how to be peaceful? Because the more you are attached, the more obsessed you are, the more restless and miserable you will become. Nisangatvam, satsangatve nisangatvam, nisangatve nirmohatvam, nirmohatve nishchalatatvam, nishchalatatve jivan dhi. So when you reach the nishchala tattvam, you reach moksha, jivan mukti, why being alive? The objective of this course is how to get moksha while being alive. We don't know what will happen after death. If you are liberated while being alive, then obviously you will be liberated after death. But if you are not liberated while being alive, definitely you will not be liberated after death. You will be born again. So while being alive, how to get liberated? Freedom, moksha. For that purpose, all the darshanas are being presented in Sankhya Darshana, Yoga Darshana, Nyaya Darshana, Vaisesh Darshana, Mimamsa Darshana, and Vedanta Darshana. All darshanas are aiming at only moksha. Then you may say, how do so many darshanas can aim at moksha itself? Yes, the objective is only moksha. And their approach is different. Six darshanas approach the same target in different perspectives. As I told you, the logical perspective of Nyaya, the psychological perspective of Yoga, the ritual perspective of Mimamsa, and the philosophical, theoretical, 
perspective of Vedanta. These different perspectives, they are not in conflict with each other. Please realize this is a very important point. Usually people think uh, all darshanas are independent, therefore they are in conflict with each other. That's not true. The Shad darshanas, the Astika darshanas, Sankhya Yoga, Nyaya Vaisheshka, Nimam and Vedanta, they are in complementarity with each other. They are not in conflict with each other. They are not in competition with each other. They complement each other. In fact, they refer to each other in respect to sutras. All darshanas are presented as sutras, by sutrakaras, like Patanjali for Yoga Sutras, Kapila for Sankhi Sutras, Kanada for Vaisishk Sutras, Dodama for Nyaya Sutras, and Badarayana for Vedanta Sutras and Brahma Sutras. They are not contradicting each other. They are complementing each other. In fact, they refer to each other. In Vaisheshka, they refer to yoga. Atmastha yoga, that is the definition. Being in yourself is yoga. Same thing Patanjali said. Yoga chittavritti nirodha tada drashtu swarupe avasthana vritti sarupe vitratta. During the yoga stage, the individual is established in himself or herself. Swarupa. Tada drashtu swarupe avasthana. Vritti sarupe vitratta. In all other times, he is identifying with the Chitavrtis. The Chitavrtis are looking at Ganga River, he is identifying with Ganga River. The Chitavrtis are looking at Himalayas, he is identifying with Himalayas. But no Chitavrti being in yourself. Again, you may say in deep sleep also you are in yourself. But deep sleep is considered as one of the Chitavrtis in your darshan. It is not considered as Atmast. So the Pramana Viparjaya Vikalpa Nidra Smuteha, five Chitavrtis. Nidra is Abha Prachaya Lambra Vritta Nidra. An heartless state of a mind is called Nidra in Yoga Darsha. Of course, in Mandakya Upanishad, we have seen it was an Avastha, Nidra Avastha, Sushupti Avastha. So here the Yoga Darshana has identified five Chitavrtis. Pramana Viparjaya Vikalpa Nidra Smuti. Arbhuta Vishaya Sampramoda Smriti. Smriti, we know memory. To re experience the previous experiences already experienced is known as memory. And Viparjaya, Viparjaya Mithya Jnana Matatru, it's an illusory knowledge. Like seeing the water in Viraj, Damaul, or any other illusion. So, Vikalpa is another kind of uh, perception where the, you don't have the object, but you have some kind of indication. Of it. So, they have gone so microscopic level that they have not left anything untouched. So, the first is Pramana. Pramana is, that is valid knowledge, provable knowledge. Pramana means proof. So three types of proofs exist. Pratyaksha, Anuvana and Agni. Knowledge can be acquired in three different epistemologies. This is called epistemology. Valid knowledge, provable knowledge can be acquired through three different Pramanas according to Yoga Darshan. Of course, in Nyaya Darshana, there are many more Pramanas. Apart from the Pratyaksha, Anuvana and Agama or Shabda, they also have and the other, you know, example and upama and so on and so forth. There are a number of pramanas, the whole Shastra, Nyaya Shastra, Nyaya Darshana, which we will cover, try to cover tomorrow, uh, is comprising of the pramanas, pro proofs, different types of proofs. Now, this is a very important distinction, contrast between other religions, particularly the Abrahamic religions. And Indic religions, dharmic religions, is the proof, validity. We cannot simply believe something. Of course, in uh, Anadhan Dharma also, 99% of the people simply believe something without bothering about proof. But the Shastras, the Darshanas, the entire Sanatana Dharma is based on valid knowledge with proof. 
so that valid knowledge with proof is known as pramana and you know we have the word pramana patra for a certificate that means it's a proof that you have finished this course it's called pramana patra certificate so similarly provable knowledge proof is possible through pratyaksha observing <coughs> that we have the proverb in english seeing is believing anumana inference and agama which is shabda praman which is the topics which cannot be proved either by observation or by inference come under the category of shabda praman in fact vedasya vedata pratyaksha anumana pramana those topics which cannot be approached or accessed by pratyaksha and anumana those topics are discussed in veda shabda praman it's called agama that means that which has come that means for example whether god exists or so you can neither observe with your own eyes or any other senses nor you can infer therefore there is shabda praman that god is there so the veda says एकम सत्यमानीश्वरा veda and the astika darshana all the six also uphold the existence of god and that's why they are astika darshanas whereas nastika darshanas which reject the authority of the veda like buddha jaina charvaka loka and they also therefore reject the existence of ishwara god or creator <coughs> and in that context the other religions which are against sanatan dharma or against veda but accept ishwara are more closer than the nastika darshanas in one way but in another way the nastika darshanas of buddha jaina they also accept dharma and yoga therefore they are more closer to sanatan that's why they are known as dharmic darshanas and they are originated in india only. of course nastika darshanas like charvaka loka is also originated in india as against the abraham now the yoga darshana talks of the procedure of quelling a quietening a quieting a calming down a chilling the mind from these five different activities observation inference acceptance of referential knowledge or hallucination or indirect perception or finally sleep or memory this different five five plus three eight because three are the three types of pramanas these different chitta vrittis if you are not engaged in any one of them if you are in yourself chitta vritti nirodha tada drashtu swarupe avastha then what will happen you will be free from the afflictions suffering sorrows miseries that come out of this chitta vrittis because all afflictions are coming from mind only so the mind is not there mind is gone it is uh, quelled down virodha it is stopped then you are in yourself what is that yourself he has not told patanjali has not told what is that swarupa whereas the upanishads the vedanta darshana they have explained what is that swarup i am atma brahma this self is brahman this self not the mind not the chitavrittis without chitavrittis when you are in yourself you are supreme being you are divine so that realization is liberation moksha how to reach that stage how to calm the mind abhyas vairagya abhyam tan nirodha through abhyas and vairagya you can arrest the mind mental modifications chitta vrittis 
ಅಭ್ಯಾಸ ತತ್ರ ಸ್ಥಿತ ಯತ್ನೋ ಅಭ್ಯಾಸ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ 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 ಸತು ದೀರ್ಘಕಾಲ ನೈರಂತರ್ಯ ಸತ್ಕಾರ ಸೇವಿತೋ ದೃಢ ಭೂಮಿ ಈವನ್ ದಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಬ್ರೇಕ್ಸ್ ನೈರಂತರ್ಯ ದೀರ್ಘಕಾಲ ನೈರಂತರ್ಯ ಸತ್ಕಾರ ಸೇವಿತೋ ದೃಢ ಭೂಮಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಂಗ್ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಅಚೀವ್ ಇನ್ ಅರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಬೈ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಮೇಕ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಈಕ್ವಲಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ಅಭ್ಯಾಸ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ಅಭ್ಯಾಮ್ ತನ್ ನಿರೋಧ ಹೌ ಟು ಅರೆಸ್ಟ್ ದಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಯು ಯು ಮೇ ಬಿ ಅ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪರ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ಸ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಪ್ರೈಮ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಲೈಕ್ ಕೆ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಪ್ರೈಮ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಸೊ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದೋಸ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ಸ್ ಅವೆವರ್ ಮಚ್ ಯು ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಯುವರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಬೈ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಟು ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ದಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಆರ್ ಕಾನ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ರನ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಅಚೀವಿಂಗ್ ದೋಸ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ದೃಷ್ಟ ಅನುಸ್ರವಿಕ ವಿಷಯ ವಿತೃಷ್ಣ ವಶೀಕಾರ ಸಂಜ್ಞಾ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯಂ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯಂ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಶೀಕಾರ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಕಾಂಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕ್ರೇವಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವೆದರ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಆರ್ ಅನ್ಹರ್ಡ್ ದೃಷ್ಟ ಅನುಸ್ರವಿಕ ವಿಷಯ ವಿತೃಷ್ಣ ವಶೀಕಾರ ಸಂಜ್ಞಾ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ಸೊ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯಂ ಈಸ್ disgust detachment and total disconnection from all desires whether you heard of them or not heard of them whether you seen them or not seen tat param purusha khyate guna vai krishnam so those who are established in vairagya they will reach the parama purusha supreme being so these two factors jointly abhyasa and vairagya abhyasa vairagya together are the requirement for yoga chitta vritti nirodha of course that is the essential requirement then the procedural steps so ashtangas are provided in the yoga darshana of course in some of the yoga upanishads only shastangas are there namaniyamas being assumed but here because we cannot assume anything He has added uh, Yama Yamayas, which are the equivalent of dharma. They are not exactly dharma, but they are almost like dharma. So by adding uh, Yama Yamayas, it became Ashtangas. Yama Yamayas, Prana, Yama Pracha, Har, Dharana, Jhana, Samadhyo, Ashtavangani. So Yoga Anga Anishthana, Suddhikshaya. So by practice of the Yoga Angas, the impurities in the body will be eliminated <coughs> and then you will reach enlightenment oganga anushthana asuddhikshaya and then your sutra continues to say that you will transcend to the supreme being so of course there is another definition i am just touching a few sutras here and there ತಪಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಯೇಶ್ವರ ಪ್ರಣದಾನ ಕ್ರಿಯಾ ಯೋಗ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಯೋಗ ಕ್ರಿಯಾ ಯೋಗ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಯೋಗ ಅಫ್ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಬ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆನ್ ದಟ್ ನೇಮ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಯೋಗ ಕಂಪ್ರೈಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ತಪಸ್ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಯ ಅಂಡ್ ಈಶ್ವರ ಪ್ರಣ ತ್ರೀ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ತಪಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಓವರಲ್ ತಪಸ್ ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ತಪಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ತಪಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ಅನುದ್ವೇಗಕರಂ ವಾಕ್ಯಂ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಪ್ರೇಹಿತ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮ ವಾಂಗ್ಮಯಂ ತಪ ಉಚ್ಯತೆ ದೇವಗುರು ಪ್ರಾಜ್ಞ ಪೂಜನ ಶೌಚ ಮಾರ್ಜವ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಚರ್ಯ ಅಹಿಂಸಾ ಚ ಶಾರೀರ ತಪ ಉಚ್ಯತೆ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ತಪ ಇಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಾಮ್ನೆಸ್ ಮೌನ ಆತ್ಮ ವಿನಿಗ್ರಹ ಭಾವ ಸಂಶುದ್ಧೀತ್ಯ ಮಾನಸ ತಪ ಉಚ್ಯತೆ ಸೌಮ್ಯತ್ವ ಸೊ ದಿ ತ್ರೀ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ತಪಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಯ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ತಪಸ್ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಯ ಈಶ್ವರ ಪ್ರಿಂಟ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ದ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ಟು ದಿ ಈಶ್ವರ್ ಯು ಪುಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ವರಿ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಲ್ಯಾಪ್ ಇನ್ ಟು 
of course if you want to compare with vedanta darshana which we will do on the last day through the viveka and vairagya it is possible to achieve atma jnana brahma jnana so same thing is being told in a different way yoganga anushthana asuddhikshaya tap viveka akhyate so the all are complementary as i told you yoga and vedanta are complementary to each other in that they are supplementary complementary to each other one without the other will be lame it is incomplete so those who go only by vedanta darshana and don't practice any yoga they will not be able to achieve results because you need to have some practices and you don't have any practice only theory that's called metta vedanta in telugu and similarly those who practice only yoga without understanding any vedanta they will be physically fit and healthy but except that they don't have knowledge jnana so both yoga and vedanta are together required to get the moksha or brahma jnana or atma jnana or self realization whatever you call it so now coming back to the yoga sutras and yoga darshana there are four chapters in the yoga sutras in the in these four chapters he has covered the entire yoga system he has not a uh, lot of people think that patanjali himself created yoga darshana it's not true like one day ramdev told in a meeting almost all people think uh, that i myself created yoga that yoga darshana yoga shastra i have not created yoga shastra patanjali ki this is what ramdev tells but the fact is that even patanjali did not create yoga darshana it was there way before patanjali was born right from the vedas and i myself have noted down the mantras in yajurveda pertaining to yoga in my student days and during my government service days or 30 years later when i when i was studying the upanishads the shatashtra upanishad was nothing but those very mantras which i noted down from the yajurveda on yoga darshan so then i understood that the upanishads are derivatives from the vedas themselves so the yoga darshana is prevalent in the vedas themselves and then the upanishads because in the athopanishad for example it says nayamatma pravasine labhyo this self cannot be acquired or atma jnanam cannot be acquired by listening to lectures or by giving lectures nayamatma pravasine labhyo nam yathaya na bahuna sute not by being i iq if you have you cannot acquire that and nam bahuna sute not by reading studying the shrutis hearing lectures and so on so forth it is not adequate though it is necessary vedanta jnanam is necessary but it is not sufficient sufficient comes from your own experience adhyatma yoga na avadigamyam is possible to reach only through your spiritual yoga process of transformation of your personality from the individual to the supreme so the process of transformation is called evolution parinabatam samskara and of course patanjali is also talked of evolution he talked of tivra samvega nam asanna so those who evolve very rapidly fast they can achieve just like that tivra samvega nam asanna prudu madhyadi matratva tato upavishesha other than tivra samvega there are other categories who are very slow dead slow or medium prudu madhya different speeds so but all are evolving the evolution from as uh, sri arabindo says from an ordinary being human being to super being superman super conscious super mind the ascent of the man towards and the descent of the super super mind into the man so this process of evolution is called yoga and that's why sri arabindo said all life is yoga because we are evolving throughout our life sri arabindo gave the best possible english interpretation to yoga as well as vedanta as well as veda he was my second guru my first guru was vivekananda himself so vivekananda was the most dynamic and most powerful person who expressed 
Sanatana Dharma, Yoga, Vedanta, in a very brief manner, complete works of Vivekananda, which I studied at the age of 12. There is a whole book on Raja Yoga. Of course, all are his lectures which are recorded. He has covered all the Yoga Sutras so far. I was brought up in the Ramakrishna Mat with Vivekananda as my first guru. At the age of 12, I studied complete works of Vivekananda. At the age of 17, I studied complete works of Arabindu. I took Pondicherry also. He is my second guru, theoretically, but practically, I had many other physical gurus in yoga. Dikshitlu, Suri Raghav Dikshitlu was my first guru, apart from my own mother, who taught me yoga asanas at the age of eight. And the age of 10, I studied, I learned the professional yoga from Suri Raghav Dikshitlu at Ramakrishna Mach at Second Rabbi, which is where the Vivekananda Hall was established. On, to commemorate the visit of Swami Vivekananda in 1898 to a school right behind it. It's called Bhagavad College High School. Now it is called Swami Vivekananda Institute of Technology, which is where I studied also. So before going to Chicago, Swami Vivekananda came to the school in Second Rabbit and he gave a lecture. And that uh, meeting was presided over by Sikandar Jha, the royal family member on whose name Sikandarabad was kept. So, such an important spot, and that is where Ramakrishna Mat was created. Later, it was shifted to Domal Guda, where it exists in Hyderabad area. So, now the, the yoga practices start with the asana. Yama niyama asana pranayama prachahar dharana dhana samadhyo ashtavangan. So, yama are five satya ahimsa brahmacharya astaya aparigraha, the five fundamental cardinal principles. They are universal sovereign principles and they cannot be violated at any cost and any abrogation or any violation of these five principles will lead to a backlash which is having no end. So that's what Patanjali says. Sarabhauma Mahavratam. They are sovereign, universal, swearing principles. You swear on them. That is how the law of the land comes into existence. Law of all countries are based on these five principles. Satya Himsa. No law is there without these five. And these five are accepted across the universe in all theistic, atheistic, communist, socialist, capitalist, any system, they accept these five. Because without which there cannot be any society existing. The remaining five niyamas are desirable, though they are not essential. Shaucha, Santosha, Tapas, Swadhyaya, Isra Pranita. The Nastika Darshanas don't accept Ishwara, therefore they know it's the Ishwara Pranita. But all others they accept. Out of the ten, nine they act. So purity, contentment, satisfaction. Santosha means satisfaction. And uh, tapas we have already discussed. Swadhyaya we have already discussed. Study of spiritual literature and uh, texts. So these Yamanayamas are followed by the Asana. Steram Sukham Asana. You are able to sit for a long time without discomfort, without moving this way, that way. One and a half hours you should sit without moving or discomfort. For that, the basic four asanas, this is Sukhasana, there's Padmasana, there's Siddhasana, there's Vajrasana. We'll be learning these things in our yoga course. <coughs> then there are more than 84 asanas which are prevalent today. They have covered, I have covered in my book on asanas. And more than 150 were there when I was able to practice in my younger days. And there are hundreds of asanas originally. There are thousands of, which are all gone. Now we're around 100 or so exist. And all the asanas have miraculous effect on the health, fitness. And then once the asana stage is crossed, we go into pranayama. What is pranayama? Ayama, regulation, control of the prana, which is represented in the two the left nostril, right nostril, breathing, Hidanadi, Pingadanadi, and Sushumna in between. And there are 18 nadis. There are 72,000 nadis total in the body. Prana Vahikas. And Prana inside the body and outside the body it is there throughout the universe. So to understand Prana, Pranopasana is called Pranayama. Prana itself is Devata. And the Upasana of Prana is known as Pranayama. Tatakshyate Prakashavaranam. It will remove the Rajoguna, the engulfing cover and dharana sucha yogyata manasaha they also make the mind fit for concentration. So dharana is concentration in between is prachahara that is introvert withdrawal from the external world into myself. 
అంతర్ముఖం త్వాప్ ఇట్ ఇస్ కాల్డ్ ప్రత్యాహార ధారణ ఇస్ కాన్సన్ట్రేషన్ దేశబంధ చిత్తస్ ధారణ తత ప్రత్యేకత ధ్యానం అండ్ కంటిన్యూస్ ఫ్లో ఫర్ అ లాంగ్ టైమ్ ఇన్ ద సేమ్ డీప్ కాన్సన్ట్రేషన్ స్టేట్ ఇస్ నోన్ యాజ్ మెడిటేషన్ ధ్యాన అండ్ స్వరూప శూన్యం ఇన్ దట్ డీప్ మెడిటేషన్ అ లాంగ్ టైమ్ యూ లవ్స్ యువర్ సెల్ఫ్ యు ఆర్ లాస్ట్ స్వరూప శూన్యం ఇవ యుర్ లాస్ట్ then it is called samadhi so samadhi is of different types we have the asamprajna samadhi samprajna samadhi as broad categories followed by savitarka nirvitarka savichara nirvichara sabija nirbija and till the nirbija the bija exists and tasya api nirodhe sarva nirodhan nirbija samadhi and bija is also removed that absorption is called nirbija samadhi which is full scale moksha సో సమాధో ఇన్ సమాధి ఆత్మజ్ఞాన ఆత్మ సాక్షాత్కార్ యోగేన ఆత్మదర్శనం జీవాత్మ పరమాత్మ సంయోగ ఏవ యోగ యోగ ది వర్డ్ యోగ ఇట్స్ మీన్ జాయినింగ్ వాట్ జీవాత్మ అండ్ పరమాత్మ ఇన్ఫాక్ట్ దే ఆర్ వన్ అండ్ ది సేమ్ బట్ ఇట్స్ నాట్ బీయింగ్ రియలైజ్ డ్యూ టు మాయా డ్యూ టు అహంకార అహంకార ఎక్సెట్రా సో వెన్ యూ ట్రాన్సెండ్ ది చిత్త చిత్త వృత్తి త్రూ యోగ ప్రాక్టీస్ యూ కెన్ రీచ్ యువర్ ట్రూ స్టేట్ ఆఫ్ సెల్ఫ్ విచ్ ఈస్ ఆత్మస్థితి విచ్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో పరమాత్మ స్థితి సో ఓన్లీ వన్ సెల్ఫ్ ఎగ్జిస్ట్ అండ్ యూ ఆర్ దట్ టు రియలైజ్ దట్ ఈస్ ఫ్రీడమ్ మోక్ష అండ్ టు బి ఎస్టాబ్లిష్డ్ ఇన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ జీవన్ మోక్ష సో వీ హ్యావ్ కవర్డ్ సాంఖ్య అండ్ యోగ దర్శన టుడే మోరో వీ విల్ టేక్ అప్ న్యాయ వైశిష్ట అండ్ డే ఆఫ్టర్ వీల్ టేక్ అప్ విమాంస కళ్ళ బాబు గారు ఆర్బిక్వెస్ట్ పీపుల్ టు పోస్ట్ దర్ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఇన్ ద చాట్ బాక్స్ సో దట్ ఇట్ కెన్ బి టేకెన్ అప్ వన్ బై వన్ అండ్ వీ ఆర్ నాట్ గోట్ టేక్ అప్ ఓవర్ క్వశ్చన్స్ బికాస్ ఆ బాబు గారు వీ ఆర్ హియర్ ఓకే Uh, we are not going to take up oral questions because uh, it's going too lengthy so put your questions in the chat box so we'll take up one by one should i go ahead uh, kalm babur yeah yeah please hardik uh, since Yeah. Babu, are you going ahead? You are saying something? No, no. You start with the chat box. Right. Okay. The first question is, since Buddhism and Jainism are relatively recent, does it mean that the darshanas are also being added? Uh, yes. Uh, the, the oldest is Sankhya. followed by yoga patanjali was next to kapila there may be two patanjalis the mahabhashya the grammarian patanjali may be a different one is not still confirmed so because the grammarian patanjali of mahabhashya is subsequent to panini who is around 7th century bc they say whereas the patanjali of yoga sutras to which there is a vyasa bhashya we still don't know whether it is same vyasa or a different vyasa so this uh, came after uh, kapila sankhya yeah and so, the after that came the ya ya vaisheshika in the sequence the time sequence and it's quite possible that uh, the other darshanas which are outside these six came much after later so like buddha is the normal textbook description is 5th century bc but now it is known as 19th century bc buddha so buddha darshana came much later to buddha and uh, buddha sutras then jain sutras they were almost contemporary to each other buddha and mahavira were contemporary to each other though the previous to mahavira there are many tirthankaras sapta rishabh deva yes darshanas are being that's why there are 24 darshanas if you want to add one more darshana you are welcome next question <laughs> why agama 
anything that can cannot be explained or classified as agama agamama then anything can be classified as agamama this is the question no it is it means uh, 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 received knowledge agama means received coming so knowledge which is coming to us as valid knowledge but it is not amenable to prachaksha and anuman so such, that is called agama so all knowledge all referential knowledge is the agama shabda praman referential knowledge like even in our normal daily life there are many topics which are beyond us to either see ourselves or infer by ourselves like for example if you got stomach ache you go to the doctor doctor will tell you you have so and so problem you can neither infer it because you don't know the subject nor you can see it you simply believe what doctor says so that is called shabda praman but provided it is also known as apta vakya because the person who telling you is genuine is not your enemy or cheat and is you are interested in your welfare and is speaking truth when you have that belief then you accept that is called shabda praman yeah in sanskrit bharat text astika nastika darshanas are meant uh, to those who accept vedas and those who don't rather than ishwara acceptance please elaborate on this this moment i think there's some problem Just hold on. He is going to come back. In the meantime, you can post your questions in the chat box. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the answer to that question is the accepting the Veda means accepting Ishvara because Veda accepts Ishvara. Veda is theistic text or Veda is a theistic uh, philosophy. so once you accept veda you automatically means you accept ishwara or once you accept ishwara you automatically you accept it that is why those nastik darshanas don't either accept veda or accept ishwara both means same next what is the aim of darshanas i told you in the beginning the aim of darshanas is how to reach moksha and what, how the vedas are interpreting different uh, dimensions or perspectives of reality so these different dimensions different perspectives and different topics are being analyzed to understand the truth in the vedas okay next question is could you please explain the 24 components of prakriti which you told while explaining yeah pancha. 23 the 24th is purusha we have the panchabhutas we have the panchendriyas we have pancha tanmatras 15 and then we have the mano buddhi ahankara chitta mano buddhi ahankara chitta four antakaranas internal instruments so total is 23 and fourth is purusha uh, 24th is purusha so total 24 tattvas of course pradhana if you take then purusha is outside 24 mahat is called pradhana is mahat mahad ahankaram mano buddhi chitta coming down 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 pancha tanmatras pancha indriyas pancha bhutas okay that is the 24 okay okay next is prakriti and purusha the relation between them and to what extent they are attached yeah there are two faces of the same coin the reality is manifest in two different aspects prakriti and purusha i already discussed purusha is the consciousness atma chaitanyam thinker feeler enjoyer sakshi 
whereas the prakriti is all other things the gunas the vikaras the actions their causes karya karana kartrutva so this is very clearly described in bhagavad gita also and many other texts you can read bhagavad gita to understand what is prakriti and what is you can read many in many chapters it has been lakshatra kshatra jnana vibhaga yoga and also in ninth chapter and so on so next uh prabhu ji very much thankful to your knowledge uh, start uh, sharing with us is this is it possible through yoga to get moksha uh, yes that is what is atma darshanam yogena atma darshanam you will get self realization through yoga this statement is there yogena atma darshanam next question is to translate the niyama santoshi santosh is contentment a better word than satisfaction no tosha tosha means happiness santosha is samyak tosha is santosh full happiness satisfaction happiness is indicated by satisfaction contentment so you don't need you suppose you are eating food you are serving food then you say i don't want you are satisfied and that happiness in general also is santosha both are meaning the same contentment happiness satisfaction so the next question is if it is referential knowledge then it must be pratyaksha pramana for someone no. else uh, maybe may not be uh, same example of that yeah yeah maybe may not be because the the topics which are covered under shabda pramana or referential knowledge are quite often not possible to be covered under pratyaksha pramana for anyone because the subjects like what happens after death whether soul exists or not whether god exists or not unknown things which cannot be known either by observation or by inference those topics are discussed in the veda that is why it is given the status of pramanyata and tadvachana dhamna yasya pramani even dharma dharma is being uh, dharma you cannot observe you cannot infer but it is there it dharma is there, declared by the veda tadvachana dhamna yasya pramanyam in vaishesh krutha dhamna ya veda gets its pramanyam its validity because it is dharma vachana of course as you said in some cases very few cases like uh, the morning you uh, somebody has seen something and evening you you not seen it so that morning person says i have seen in the morning then it's fine that is somebody else's projection is working as reflection wall for you there's only limited scope but we are talking of topics which cannot be approached projection or anuman also both by anyone those topics when they are being uh, elaborated it is called uh, chapter pram next can you please enlighten us on vaisheshika darshan Yeah, we'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it in detail. The physics, it's all physics. I wrote a book on that. The physics of Vaisesh was published by the uh, Vedic University of Tripura. I think uh, you can get give the reference of that book to that uh, link. Yeah, I'll do that. Next, uh, next is Prakriti and Purusha. The same, the exact relation between them. Kindly elaborate with few more examples for better understanding. yeah purusha is the self i i i is also atma parmatma so that is purusha sakshi abhyaya purusha sakshi kshetrajna akshara and that is purusha and prakriti is all the rest the creation all the actions aspects of processes karya karana kartrutva is prakriti and vikaras birth death growth all this six vikaras every object goes through process and then gunas mainly the three gunas devi hesha gunamayi mama maya durachaya mame vaye prapajyante maya metam tarante he declared in the bhagavad gita this divine power prakriti as three guna gunamayi it is full of gunas and it is maya devi esha gunamayi mama maya is my own maya 
Duracheya, it cannot be transcended. And those who propitiate me, Mameva ye prapadjante, Aya metam tarantite, only those who reach me will be able to transcend the prakriti. Yeah. Next question is If we are accepting Vedas, then we accept Ishvara. Then why should we accept Darshana that do not accept Ishvara? Yeah, you need not. The Darshanas which do not accept Ishvara are not Nastika Darshanas. Buddha, Jaina, Charvaka, Loka. You need not accept that those people accept. Those people don't want to accept Vedas and don't, don't want to accept Nastika Darshanas. Because they have an allergy towards Ishwara. You don't have an allergy, then you need not accept that. That's why they are Hindus, they are Buddhists. But both accept Dharma, there are certain commonalities, but otherwise they don't accept each other. Are Yoga Dashna and Yoga Shasanas complementary to each other or separate? No, there is no Shasana, it is called Yoga Anushasanam. That is the first. Sutra, Atha Yoga Anushasanam, like Pat Panini gave Atha Shabda Anushasanam. That means this is a subject pertaining to yoga. That's what it means. There is no Shasana called Yoga. Not Yoga Asana. Yoga Asana is. Ah, Asana. Okay. Yoga Asanas are part of Yoga. Out of the eight uh, Angas, Asanas are one of the Angas. Okay. Is a... Next is. If Darshanas and Vedangas are supportive literature flowing from one Vedas, what is the difference between them? No, no. Vedangas are prerequisites. Think topics like grammar, prosody, hmm. dictionary, that is Siksha, Kalpa, Vyakarana, Nirukta, Chanda, Jyotisha, Astronomy, which are compulsory prerequisites to understand or interpret any Vedic mantra. Without which you cannot understand anything. And the Upangas or Darshanas are the philosophical perspectives of the Vedic mantras. The Vedic mantras only are giving all this finally. They are distributed everywhere in the Veda and the Veda. Darshanas are giving focused, compiled perspective of each topic. What is Purva and Uttara Mimamsa? Yeah, Mimamsa means analysis. Purva Mimamsa refers to Jaimini's Sutras. Jaimini is one of the four disciples of Vyasa to whom the Samaveda was attached. And uh, this Jaimini has written the Sutras called Jaimini Sutras, which become the Mimamsa Darshan. Which talk about, like, he starts with the statement Chodana Lakshana We will be covering on Monday. So, whereas the Uttar Mimamsa, second part is of Mimamsa is called Vedanta Darshana, which is the Brahma Sutras, written by Badrayana. Vedanta Sutras are Uttar, it's called Uttar Mimamsa. Even whatever Shankaracharya read is also called Uttar Mimamsa. It's only a name given to Vedanta. Yeah, I think we have come to the end of questions. I think we can go for Pradhana. So if uh, anybody wants to directly interact with uh, Prabhuji, raise your hand. Otherwise, we will go for Pradhana. Let us request Satyaji to chant Pradhana, please. Yes. <clears throat> Swasti Prajabhya Paripala Yantam Nyaye Namarge Namahi Mahishaha Go Brahmane Pyasuhamastu Nityam Loka Samasta Sukhino Pavantu Kale Vashat Pajanyaha Prutivi Sasya Shalini Desho Yam Choparahito Brahmana Santunit Payaha Aputra Putrana Santu Putrana Santu Pautrinaha Adhana Sadhana Santu Jeevantu Sharadam Shatam Satyam Vada Dharmam Chara Swadhyayanma Pramadaha Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Paschantu Makas Chidduka Bhagavet Om Shanti 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 Purnamada Purnamidam 
ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಚತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾಂತಿ ಸರ್ವೆ ಜನ ಸುಖಿನೋಂತು ಲೋಕ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಸುಖಿನೋಂತು ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ಧನ್ಯವಾದ ಸೊ ನಾವು ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಆಂಥಮ್ ಪ್ರಲಾ ಚಿಟಿಪಾಬ್ ಗಾರು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರಿಸೈಟ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಆಂಥಮ್ ಜನ ಗಣ ಮಣ ಅಧಿನಾಯಕ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಭಾರತ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ವಿಧಾತ ಪಂಜಾಬ್ ಸಿಂಧು ಗುಜರಾತ್ ಮರಾಠ ದ್ರಾವಿಡ ಉತ್ಕಲ ಬಂಗ ವಿಂಧ್ಯ ಹಿಮಾಚಲ ಯಮುನಾ ಗಂಗ ಉಚ್ಚಲ ಜಲ ಭಿತರಂಗ ತವ ಶುಭ ನಾಮೆ ಜಾಗೇ ತವ ಶುಭ ಆಶಿಷ ಮಾಂಗೇ ಗಾಹೆ ತವ ಜಯ ಗಾಥ ಜನಗಣ ಮಂಗಳದಾಯಕ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಭಾರತ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ವಿಧಾತ ಜಯ 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 ಧನ್ಯವಾದ ಚಲ್ಲಾ ಚಿಟಿಪಾಬ್ ಗಾರು